All right. Uh, hello, everyone. Thank you for coming. Uh, I'm Abi. I'm a Drupal developer at Previous Next. So today uh, we will discuss uh, what can we gain by moving or migrating from Nginx and PHP FPM to Nginx unit. The first part is uh, we can have a more simple and powerful configuration. And the second part is uh, we can containerize our application uh, easier. At the end of the talk, I'll show you a little uh, live demo of the Nginx uh, unit configuration. Before we dive into Nginx unit, let's talk about Nginx, uh, the normal Nginx. So Nginx uh, is a proxy server and a static file server and uh, it's very good at it. Because it is a proxy server, another server needs to, to run behind it, either HTTP, CGI, USG, or SCGI. And that server that runs behind uh, is the one that executes the code. So Nginx itself can, cannot run or code or programming language. In PHP and Drupal community, running Nginx in front of PHP FPM, which acts as a PyCGR server, is widely adopted. So in this case, FPM is the one that executes the PHP scripts. Compared to normal Nginx, Nginx unit, or we can just call it unit, uh, is an application server that understands the programming language uh, natively, including PHP. This is similar to how the PHP module for Apache works. It was built by the Nginx team, and it is open source under uh, Apache 2 license. There are also other PHP, PHP application servers on the rise, like Wordrunner, Swole, or Workerman, and many more. But most of these servers uh, changes the paradigm of PHP about not sharing state uh, between requests. Let's go into the first part about Configuration. Nginx unit configuration is managed dynamically over HTTP via a friendly RESTful JSON API. This means it offers more simplicity and flexibility than Nginx and PHP FPM. By using JSON format, it is more portable because most programming languages support JSON natively. And from the DevOps standpoint, this is a huge win because you can create custom scripts, tooling, wrapper, or, or even interfaces to deal with configuration and manipulate it uh, easily. Because it is an HTTP API, so there are no configuration files like Nginx con or FPN con. And all the changes to the configuration are graceful with zero interruptions. We don't need to restart or reload the, the server. <laughs> Let's see the configuration for each of them. This is what Nginx configuration looks like for a typical Drupal site. Uh, this is taken from the official recipe documentation. It has its own syntax for the configuration format, so uh, it will be hard to manipulate it programmatically. The next one is PHP FPM configuration, which uses any syntax. It's more simple than Nginx format, 
and it uh, supported by PHP natively, at least for uh, reading the syntax with parse ini file and parse ini string function, but not writing it to ini syntax. Unfortunately, it is not very good with uh, nested structures. Now, this is what the unit's configuration looks like. I'm sure uh, we all, all recognize this format. Yeah, it's just a uh, plain JSON. And it's super easy to manipulate it programmatically. Many of the directives in the unit configuration are similar to the Nginx configuration. Take this snippet, for example, is to configure the IP address and ports that the server will listen to. And just like Nginx, which can have multiple server, uh, listen to different ports, uh, units can also do that. Here we can see protection for some files defined by patterns. So if the location of the URI match the patterns, it will return 404. So the thing is, uh, if you are familiar with Nginx configuration, you won't face uh, many problem configuring uh, Nginx unit. Some parts of the unit's configuration also have similar behavior to PHP FPM. Here, the process, uh, the process are equivalent to combination of dynamic and on-demand setup of, PH, of PHP FPM. We can set the maximum and spare children that will be spawned. We can also set the process idle timer. Or if you want to configure unit to behave like a static setup of FPM. So this is how we do it. We just put uh, an integer as the process value. Unit also allow us to set a PHP configuration directly. We can set the path to the PHP configuration file that we want to use. We can also set individual configurations in the admin and user section. The admin section is equivalent to PHP in a system mode, so it cannot be changed at runtime. While the user section is equivalent to PHP in a user mode and can be changed at runtime, for example, with any set function. Environment variables can also be easily configured and they can be changed dynamically uh, at runtime. So how to apply unit configuration? To apply configuration changes, we only need to make an HTTP request to the unit's control endpoint. We can use widely available tools like CURL, or we can use any HTTP client out there. Uh, one thing to notice, uh, by default, unit control is using Unix socket. So it can be only accessed from the same machine. And not all HTTP clients support Unix socket. It can be configured to use IP base instead when you starting uh, the unit server. So in making a request, we can upload JSON file containing the configuration, or we can use JSON string uh, as a request body. We can either supply the whole configuration objects, or if you want to change only certain parts of the configuration, you can translate the tree in the JSON object into URL path. For example, if you want to update memory limit in the, in the PHP application option. We want to use this path in the URL. So we can see 
in the JSON object there there are applications and then Drupal and then admin and then memory limit and its value. So we put that in the in the URL slash config. This is uh, the root part of the units config API and then slash application slash Drupal slash option slash admin slash memory limit and we put the value as a JSON string uh, in the request body. <laughs> right, let's get to the second part about containerization. When talking about containerization in PHP using Nginx and FPM, I've seen that the community is divided into two arguments. Should Nginx and FPM run in separate containers or should they run together uh, in a single container? So running Nginx and FPM in separate containers requires the PHP application to reside in both containers, either via shared volume that is mounted to both containers or copied to both containers when you're building the image. The other side of the argument is to run both Nginx and FPM in a single container. This usually comes with an additional process manager to handle the Nginx and FPM surface. If we cannot use two separate containers, for example, in platform as a surface uh, environment or some organization policy, so we have to choose uh, the later option. Now with Nginx unit, we don't have to worry about that anymore because it is only one surface. So one container is enough. We can mount the application to the container if we want, or we can copy the application to the container when building the image. So it fits all our needs, whichever it is. Units provide a Docker image for PHP. So you can use it uh, as it is, or you can use it as a base image. The base, is, the base image itself is based on PHP CLI or Docker image. So it's a Debian. You can install PHP extension like you install extension with the official PHP Docker image. If you use something different than official PHP Docker image, so you can replicate how unit was installed uh, in its best image. <laughs> unit also provides uh, an easy, easy way to initialize configuration in Docker. So you just put your configuration in JSON file. Uh, copy it into docker entry point directory and the entry point will upload that file to the unit's endpoint when the container running for the first time. Right, <coughs> I will show you a little demo. I need to do some changes in the display here bear with me All right <coughs> so <clears throat> The first thing, uh, let's try to start our unit server. Here I use uh, the control argument to uh, use IP base instead of uh, Unix socket. So we can make HTTP requests uh, easier. Let's start it. Okay, uh, let's start now. 
I also have Drupal site installation and I have the config here here is the config uh, units config for Drupal site they have a uh, example configuration in their documentation so you can use it and customize it based on units so let's see our configuration our unit configuration we make http request and slash config this is the root part of the config api so the configuration is there let's check it <clears throat> Here uh, I have a Drupal site installation with Umami demo. <coughs> we can see here the web server is unit with its version. We can also see here we have the HP configuration memory limit with 128. So let's try uh, the memory limit. We make a put request to the unit control endpoint to the application named uh, Drupal and its PHP option in the admin section and the memory limit we change the value let's try to change its value to 256 Reconfiguration done. Let's verify it. The configuration is updated in the uh, unit endpoint. So let's see what happened. You can see now the memory limit is 256. So we don't need to we start the server or we load the server it happens gracefully uh, with zero interruptions i also <coughs> made a custom module for this demo to interact uh, with, with the unit control endpoint so here we have memory limit field with the value of 256 this is taken directly from the unit endpoint so let's try to change the memory limit again let's change it back to 128 the configuration done let's verify again it's updated Let's see what happened here. It's also uh, updated. In the status page also. So now let's see. Change the configuration directly from the Drupal admin UI. And let's see what happens. Let's change it to what 256. With configuration done, let's verify that again in unit control. Yep, it's updated. Let's check in status page also. Now it's 256. <coughs> let's get back to the slide. <coughs> Just ignore this. <laughs> <clears throat> so uh, the demo for 
for my example, is very useful if you want to build something according to our needs. For example, if you want to allow developers or operations to change PHP configuration without giving them access to the server, so we can build an interfaces to the, for them, and we can utilize uh, Drupal powerful role-based access control and, and its permission system to secure it, and they won't have to restart and reload the server. All right, to summarize, we can use Nginx unit to replace Nginx and PHP FPM with very little to lose while allowing us to gain simplicity, flexibility, and many powerful possibility of us by the unit. The configuration and behavior are similar to Nginx and FPM, so you won't face many problem if you migrating. If, if you are using more advanced feature of Nginx that are not available yet in the unit, you can always use Nginx as a proxy and units as the upstream server. In terms of containerization, unit is more straightforward than Nginx and FPM and covers more cases. And having said that, we are not using unit in previous next for production yet. So at this stage, uh, this is part of experimentation as a proof of as a proof of concept. All right, the, that's it from me. <laughs> Any questions? So, so uh, okay, hold on. Before question, I will need my friends Eric to help me. <laughs> <laughs> He's English native speaker, which can speak my native language very good. So, <laughs> thank you, Eric. <laughs> Have you done the performance benchmarking comparing like the PHP FPM plus Nginx to the unit? Uh, I haven't done benchmark benchmarking myself, but there are some uh, various benchmark in the internet with various uh, results. So. There are some results that uh, unit is better than FPM. There are also results that yeah, kind of similar between unit and FPM, but I, I haven't seen uh, in which result that unit is worse than FPM. So at least it's uh, similar performance uh, with FPM. One more. <laughs> uh, like I haven't explored the topic deeply, but I noticed a couple issues on Drupal.org that says that generally behavior of the applications and the languages with the application server is quite different to the PHP and how we tend to bootstrap for every request to all the environment set up and all of this stuff. Have you tested Drupal? Extensively in the unit? How is that the case? Um, is it just up and running, or do we still need to fix something inside the group? Do we need some budget for it? Yeah, so. Uh, unit is different with uh, some application server that uh, keep the state. So when you when you bootstrap the first request, so the state is just just leave when when the server leaves. Uh, it's it's different than that uh, unit. So unit is more like PHP model for Apache. So. Uh, yeah, it's very similar with uh, 
how nginx and fpm works so you won't have many problem with that uh, especially with drupal so i i, I have using units in uh, previous organizations so it's the uh, but not for production in uh, for client and client so it's using in part of our internal system so it, it works uh, well just like uh, nginx and fpm with no trouble at all what's your database support for like i noticed you were using sql like just then does it take MariaDB, MySQL, etc.? Just put it the last file, so I make SQL. Yeah, I just because install the uh, Imami demo with yeah. the Drupal script. So yeah, it's it's it doesn't matter or, or as long as it's supported by Drupal, so it just works works normally. Okay, uh, thank you everyone. <laughs>